Well, it is one gorgeous day at the castle. I'm here by myself today. We've got to get our electrical service trenched in. Let's go check it out. All right, so here's what we currently have. We've got power coming in to the transformer, from the transformer to this weather head here, from that weather head down the pole to this meter base and that breaker panel. It is currently a 100 amp service. I'm 100% confident 100 amp service is not gonna be enough for the castle. So I'm having them upgrade the system from 100 over to 200 over into a 200 amp meter base and a 200 amp disconnect. However, I want this pole gone. I'm perfectly fine with that pole being there. So we're gonna come down that pole which is why the excavator's here. We're gonna trench over to this retaining wall and we're gonna mount our meter base slash disconnect right here on this corner, which will then allow us to bring everything into the castle here or before all this is backfilled, if we need to get a penetration through the ICF into the crawl space to then be able to go into the castle We've got both options. Everything's mounted to the retaining wall. The retaining wall is attached to the castle. So this thought previously, whenever we were doing the ICF addition, was a forethought of mounting electrical services. This pole is just annoying and in the way. We only have 30 feet to trench, but we are in a very interesting spot. It slopes this way, it slopes this way, and it slopes that way. But I did not move the last load of fives that I got last year just in case I needed them. And I'm pretty confident I am going to need these to give myself a flat spot to get the excavator turned to trench from that pole over and then crawl over towards that pole and trench from there over. And now that I said it that way, I'm starting to wonder if I wouldn't be better off to dig this short one first and then that long one to connect the two. But I've gotta have enough room to try and get the excavator down in this corner. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to sit over top of the trench and track back and forth on it. And I've never dug here. I'm assuming there's gonna be a little bit of dirt, but I'm assuming there's also gonna be some concrete and some rock. So I'm gonna take the excavator and I'm gonna get the gravel smoothed out get myself a nice pad to sit on that I can connect those dots. You can kind of see here where I drug my heel through the gravel to come over with the pipe because we will be putting this in rigid conduit. I'm assuming there's rock down there and then come up this retaining wall. And then we'll probably kick like a 45 on that to go over to that pole. So let me get myself set up with a base here and uh, see how this goes.
get our bucket switched out and we'll start digging this trench. chunks out of the way and we'll take from that way to this way.
suck or lick other than mounting something. Well, there's the bulk of it. I've got one more corner to take care of where the 45 meets the straight. Everything else is really nice and smooth. But I am gonna take an extra precaution. I'm gonna rake a lot of this rock out of the way and I'm gonna dig an outlet. Now, as I was trying to say before the battery died, <clears throat> the bulk of the trench is cut. I've got one little corner to clean up. But they are calling for some pretty significant rain tonight. So I'm gonna rake a bunch of this gravel out of the way and i'm going to cut an outlet right down here it's not going to have to be very deep and it's not going to have to be very far i'm about to move my concrete chunks a little further <clears throat> out of my way but i don't want this thing to be completely full of water tomorrow morning when the electric company comes in and runs the 200 amp service through rigid conduit all the way over to the meter base that i will have mounted right there on the wall that's going to be interesting but we'll figure it out so we're gonna clean up this corner. We're gonna rake this gravel out of the way. We're gonna dig us an outlet in case it does rain a whole lot where the water can run out of there and get down there and cross and end up in a river like it should, so.
smooth that little crummy stuff out just a little bit. Make sure our water's gonna run out of here, hopefully. Well, there's the feed side all the way over to the pole. Again, we're going to come down that pole, come in this trench, <clears throat> make a 45 degree, run over, and go to our retaining wall. As you guys can see right down here, I knew there was some really nasty clay in this area. And right in here, it got really hard and really solid. And that's why I wanted to dig this through, because I was concerned that that same clay layer is another six inches deep here. And if I didn't give water a way out, since they're calling for significant amounts of rain tonight, <clears throat> I'm not sure the electric company would have put conduit in the ground. Because essentially, there's a potential that it would fill up with water. So now that I've cut through that clay wall, it not only helps me in the short term just for the install, but it also helps me with the long term. Because this is going to be a big mix of gravel, clay, dirt, sandy stuff. So water should always be able to, that makes it down to this trench, escape out that path for the long haul. Because I don't plan on getting in here with the vibratory roller and packing it in like it probably has been packed over ages and ages. So we've got the trench dug. Now the next step, we have a meter base and a breaker panel disconnect that I need to mount. And my preference is to mount that right here in clean area, but I can't dig that trench any further because their pole is in my way. So I'm hoping the electric company is fine coming up, turning 90, coming over and turning 90 or doing the long sweeps and get into my uh, meter base, which is gonna be mounted right over here. So I guess the way to look at it is if I mount it over there, that's where they have to go. And the trench is to the point in which they can attach rigid conduit to the concrete wall. So we're just gonna cross our fingers and hope that they're okay with them being mounted over there where I prefer them to be. And the reason I prefer that, this wall back here is going to be backfilled all the way to this line. So I have to get the proper rock, seepage rock fives to get the former drain, proper drainage. And then I'm going to cut an outlet right here and hook a four inch pipe to come along the back side of this retaining wall to take any of the water that comes out of the former drain and to take any of the water that comes down this hillside, catch it at the retaining wall and get that pressure out and away from it. And all of this area is backfilled to that height, which is about right here. And I really don't want that meter base to be right out here on this edge. I'd like for it to be over here off that edge. So. To me, that makes the most sense. It protects it a little bit more, and I know that all this is coming up two feet. And again, I'm not going to do that until we figure out how our home runs for our electrical need to be ran, because I'm here to tell you, the electrical in this castle is, um, let's just say it's interesting like everything else. So I'm going to leave this exposed for a while, but there will be a drainage line in there long term. So let's go get our meter base and our breaker panel. Let's get them mounted. Okay, so before I head outside, what I did get per the requirements is a meter base, and then you have to have a disconnect within six feet per code, which then we have the outdoor main breaker, which allows us to have that disconnect within six feet and extra breaker slots for an outlet outside. And the reason I state that is once they drop this line in tomorrow, I have zero power in this castle thereafter. Well, I thought I'd be slick, and I went over to the local 
electrical supply store and I said, hey, instead of me mounting two items, I'd really like to mount one item and kill all birds with one stone. He said, absolutely. I have an outdoor meter breaker. Awesome. So I get it. This is where the meter base would go. And it is pre-wired to then allow you to have your 200 amp disconnect here at the bottom. I'm not gonna take this apart, but that wiring goes to this 200 amp and then you've got your four individual slots for your breakers. <clears throat> However, there's a problem. The electric company that I have to use for this area does not allow a meter base that does not have a switch. What is a switch, you might ask? I don't know the proper terminology. They said a whole bunch of those interesting words. I told him he was speaking Chinese to me. So can you dumb it down? He said, absolutely. They're great people to deal with. Trash keeps falling on the floor. They're great people to deal with. They're a great supplier. I'm not complaining about them, but it just makes my job a little bit harder. So this right here, you guys see that working down in there. This right here is what they have to have to ensure that if they have to come out here and do any maintenance work for all the supply that comes in or the meter itself, they have to be able to use this switch. They do not want to use the breaker, even though it effectively does the exact same thing because this is my property. This top portion is their property. So basically, if they come in here and they're flipping this thing to service this and they end up breaking it, me, the customer, so they say, would say, oh man, you broke my stuff, you're gonna fix it, which I'm sure is normal in life and that's a typical case that happens to these people all the time. I just hate the fact that I can't use one. So I gotta return this. That's not a usable item per my electrical supplier's requirements. This is, which means we gotta mount one single meter base we got to run a ground rod out of that, ground wire out of that, and then we're going to have to mount a second box next to it to meet the requirements of my electrical company. Again, they're great people. I'm not complaining about them. But boy, that sure would be a whole lot easier just to put four tap cons into that concrete, be done, it's fixed, run one ground wire out of it, and everybody's got one panel to go out of. But unfortunately, that's not the case. So we got to take these two out there, get some measurements, figure out where we want it to make it look decent. Because I'm sure one of my HVAC systems will run out of this box off of that pole because of how close it'll be mounted. But that comes in the future. So let's get back out there, figure out how we're going to mount this meter base and that breaker panel. And we'll be back. Okay, as you guys can see, we've got a red box drawn out here with MB in it. I think you guys can see that anyway. Oh, yep, you can see that. So that's where our meter base is going to go. This corner I should still be able to get, but this bottom corner I might have to put the last anchor into it after the fact. But now, show you guys how I laid that out. I want everything two inches off the top. There's a red dotted line down here I'll show you guys here in a minute. This is the point in which I have to backfill this to. This is where it has to be. So as that rock comes around the backside, spills around this retaining wall, this is where it has to hit up and then pitch away. <clears throat> so we've got our two inch from the top mark. I already found my center. I'm gonna have, I know this is an odd dimension, but it actually spaces it out same distance off there as there, really close is 10 and a half in between. I uh, have some paperwork here that I have to go off of and I do not have any distance in between that is required. The only thing that's required is the nipple that goes from the meter base to the disconnect has to be continuous, no cuts. And I've got all of the supplies to put in each box. This would go in this one, then another one would go in this one, and then the pipe in between has to be in there with no cuts. I'm pretty confident I can handle that one. That's not that big of a requirement. So let's get this meter or a uh, disconnect i'm a little bit crazy sometimes but um, i don't want this thing to be setting crooked i don't want it to appear to be crooked so we're going to run us some really nice level lines on here this will make sure that i have 
a 90 degree corner to go off of to get this mounted. And it will also ensure, there's that word again, that everything is on the same plane. The only difference is gonna be is the breaker box is definitely longer than the meter base, but the top sides are gonna be in the same spot. This will give me my level line, my plumb line, my level line, plumb line, level line. You can see here if I level that, they are on the exact same plane. And now we're gonna mount our meter base first, get it tap conned directly to the concrete. I may need to take my hammer and knock this off where the concrete came through our uh, form boards a little bit. We're gonna get that meter base mounted, show you guys how I do that. And then we'll get our nipple in and then we'll get our trigger panel mounted. And then the only thing we'll have left to do is drive a ground rod right here that a number four solid copper will come out of the meter base and go down to the ground rod. All right, so first things first, we have four holes in this thing. They currently have pieces in them that, yes, I should probably be using a hammer instead of my hand. They have little tabs that you gotta pop out, which then will allow us to hold this thing against the wall, take our Sharpie, get our four holes, marked out hold her nice and square and plumb probably a little easier if i had a second person but that's all right we'll figure it out we always do it's just there's some high spots on the concrete that's making it want to move on me mark out our holes that we popped out I do believe, well, actually it's holding it just the right amount off of that. I don't need to knock out the concrete. Now we have our four holes. Again, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that one. Well, I had to run a little audible in my plan. I'll explain that to you guys here in a second. We got one more hole to drill for the breaker panel and then we'll explain. And I also know that the holes in my panels are too large for the base the tap cons I'm gonna use. So I purchased some fender washers to solve that problem. We know we need four tap cons per box. We we'll have four tap cons, four washers. And this will get us much closer to uh, being ready to explain to you why I have to do something that I'm really, really, I'm not gonna like it, but sometimes we don't always get what we want. Song about that, right? You can't always get what you want. Oh, come on. Looks like these tap cons are gonna be fun to deal with too. Well, at least that looks good. Looks like it's in the right spot. Oh, of course the very first one breaks off. We'll be back. Ah, this castle, I tell you. Okay, we had to switch it up and go with a different tap con. Hopefully this won't break. That sucker's on there now. All right, so what we found out was, <coughs> when I say we, I mean me. This is further down from the top of this than it is top of this. So we're actually gonna have to offset this box down so that we can 
get a straight shot over to here because that's what they require no cuts if this box had another one up higher i could make it work but i can't so we have to basically make the bottom of each box the exact same because this one is one inch and this one is one inch so i have to get me a level line off the bottom i can still use my plumb line this meter base is just got to mount lower so i'm gonna get that transferred we'll be right back Phew, that sucked. Okay, so now the Tapcons I'm using, instead of those little gold guys, I'm using these blue guys. Still gonna put a fender washer on them. <coughs> and also, I think it's gonna be very smart of me to get my nipple made, be able to slide this box over that nipple and then put my Tapcons in. So next step we're gonna do is get our nipple dimension as we know our box is gonna mount right on this edge. We've got a little bit of thread distance if we're off just a hair. We're gonna get our nipple figured out. We'll show you guys that here in a minute. All right, we got our nipple mounted. We've got everything glued. We do not have our lock washer on because that'd be kind of stupid. Wouldn't be able to get our box on there if we had that on there first. Slide our box on. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out pretty good. Oh, get your blue Tapcon mat. We're gonna go to the opposite corner here. And again, hopefully this one doesn't break. Or strip out. got one now we gotta do is line up our other one I could not drill that bottom corner so I did confirm that that ain't gonna work till after they get this pole out of my way my God, we made her snug Come on, play nice Tapcons, play nice. I don't know if it's the impact or the battery. Tighten up our top one the rest of the way. So, oh, slipping and falling, come on. Get our third one in. Just when you think tap Connor is concrete, it's gonna just make your life so simple. Oh man. Not having fun. All right, we're gonna have to clean that one out a little bit, I guess, with the hammer drill. We'll be back. Just more struggles, more struggles, more struggles. All right, as you guys can see, I got one wire ran without you. It comes to this outside lug. Per the 
electrical suppliers requirements I have to use the bottom they are always on top so this one's going to be a little bit more interesting to uh, weasel up in there but I think we'll be able to get it as long as I can get this tip out of my impact oh of course get on camera and have a struggle mat that's the, that's kind of the norm there we go so they've got these nice lugs here that just slide out of your way so basically you loosen this hub all right well the camera's not playing nice but you guys can see right there i've got two wires coming in i've got to get my second wire hooked up and then i got to get my third wire to connect the two ground legs together i'm here to tell you this big old wire is not fun i'm sure people who do it every day get used to the proper ways to flex it and all that good jazz but for a guy who doesn't do it all the time we're getting her figured out though okay these two lugs on this side are tight and i bought what i thought was enough wire but it looks like this is ground. We've got the two coming off of these lugs going over to the two hot lugs here. It looks like I've got to pull a leg. It shows out of the center, but I don't think they're... I think it's this lug. I don't know if you guys can even see that. So we look at this diagram. Apparently this is based off of an ode meter because it shows the center leg being the ground leg and coming over and going into the other panel. But I'm pretty sure this is the block that I need to go to. So we're going to get this loosened up. We're going to get this bottom lug loosened up because we're going to come. We're going to come through the same pipe and we're going to come right into the bottom of this lug here. And then go right up into that lug there, which is pretty tight bends. But I think we can make it happen. Everything else is coming out pretty nice. We'll be right back. All right. So we got to cut the end of our copper wire here. I take about an inch and just go all the way around it. Once I go all the way around it, this big wire is melted into the copper. I then take my knife and I go lengthwise, get down to the copper, and then I take my pliers and I twist that loom the direction the wire is twisted and in most cases it breaks it right off of there which then allows you to have a nice raw piece of copper sticking out come on baby I'm gonna cut myself or hit myself and get mad at this. <sighs> I don't know if you guys can see this lug over here, but we're gonna put it into this lug first. I hope. easier coming in from the bottom of the box, I can tell you that. You come, you come to do something and you think, man, this isn't going to take me that long. I wonder if I can cheat and come in from the top side. This means I got to loosen up a different lug, but it's got to be easier than fighting that tight bottom. Yeah, and then that one won't be as much of a fight, but it's still going to be a fight. Okay. 
So that means we gotta loosen up the top lug instead of the bottom lug. Going, you're doing good. All right, there's that one. Oops. It's got that good and tight. Pull it through the rest of the way to get it off of that edge there. Now, got this one measured up because so we still got to put our number four ground wire in here i don't have enough wire to go up and over so we're going to take our number four down and come through our hole for our ground rod which is okay but it looks like i need to cut this one it looks like i need to cut it about right there Take our razor knife, yep. Take our razor knife, get our one inch all the way around. <clears throat> oh, look out, I missed, goofball. Okay. Take our pair of pliers. See how that popped right off there? Hopefully you guys can see that. Yeah, you can see that. Now we've got our other lug right here. And again, I was trying to explain that earlier for the camera died. These just slide up in a little track and then you tighten them down. So now we get to try to get this one in there. There it is. Okay. Ah, come on. Kind of a tight little spot. I'm not for sure if I like those little slide mechanisms or just something that's fixed in place or not. <laughs> Having fun today. Gonna have to get down here and get personal with it, I guess. Come on now. Go through your hole. Oh, that's gorgeous. Okay, now take this tip out. We're already tightened up on that side. Put this tip in. Got that. Now loosen this up. Oh, yay. Now my Dagon tip stripped out. <laughs> oh, boy. Today, today, today. We'll be back. Stuff's breaking. All right. I didn't let you guys see me on the struggle bus. Well, that wire but we got it in there and then i drove the eight foot long ground rod right there now we're going to put our conduit on and get our number four ground wire ran up from the bottom of the panel here so that's done and taken care of yes i'm out of breath driving an eight foot long Whew. Ground rod sucks. And I did make this conduit go below frost line, which is up here. So now my ground wire is just gonna be all underground. And this here, is number golly you got shaking like crazy this here is number four ground wire we'll slide it through our conduit 
get ourselves over. Get just a little bit past. I might be blocking you with my head. Let me get a little bit past so that we can. Well, that was rude of me, wasn't it? You guys aren't stuck to much over here, but now we can bend that. This is an acorn connector. So you loosen this up, you slide it over top of your ground rod, and then your ground wire goes in between and you, you pinch the two together, basically. So we're gonna throw us a 90 degree bend on the end of our wire there. Looks like I need to clean the end of the uh, ground rod up because I mushroomed it. Hopefully just taken care of two yep two sides got us now you guys can see that acorn connector slide down on that ground rod hopefully no it's not supposed to fall all the way to the ground come over here put our 90 in there tighten her up and yes i will tighten that with a i don't think this is the right size let's see Nope, that's a 9 16 and all I have out here is a half inch, but I will tighten that up with a socket or a wrench, whatever I end up finding inside the castle there. So now we just need to get ourselves bent down, back. I know we're gonna go up and then we're gonna go over and back down on ourselves like so and i will get it in behind these wires here i will for sure get it in behind these wires here i don't want that on the front side but all i'm trying to do is get myself returned back to that lug there which is already loose we can see that we're going to need roughly that much take our cut off That took way longer than what I thought it would. Woo, it got hot too. So now, I think we can undo our bottom bend. Get ourselves shoved back in there. Ow, that's really hot on that tip, you dingbat. A lot of you guys who might do electrical work are probably going, you are doing that the hardest way, boy. And you're probably right, because I don't do this. But we're gonna figure it out. Why? Sometimes being a bull in a china shop isn't always the best option, but man, it sure feels like it's the best option right now. And I'm sure there's other electricians who do a much prettier job than this. But here we are. Got to do everything ourselves. Man, that's hot. Now we should just be able to run that straight back down our pipe. Snug that up. Yes, I need an extension, but it just broke, so I don't have that now. Now, we can take our dikes and maybe shove her back there and make it look a little better. At least I want to. It's 
scratch the back of my panel, but that's all right. There. Now that looks all right. Okay. Well, the only other thing that I want to do long term, which does not have to happen today, is get me an outlet right off the outside edge of this breaker box so that I can run extension cords in for the power that we need in the castle. But let me get all my panels back on and I'll show you guys the finished product. Well, there you have it. <clears throat> you can see everything tied together there. Power company will come in, drop that line in, put it in rigid conduit, come just past the corner there, come up into that box and take their wires and go to the top lugs, put that meter base in, and then I will have 200 amp power to my 200 amp external outdoor waterproof breaker panel. That's today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. The ditch hasn't moved, collapsed. I think it's gonna stay put with the type of product that we have there. Hopefully we don't get an absolute gully washer, but if we do, I do have the emergency water outlet to make sure that we can get this stuff installed tomorrow. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and as always, like, comment, subscribe, turn those notifications on, share away, share away. The more support we get, the more we get to do.